thank you for coming for this uh, presentation. Um, this is essentially a presentation and a journey that we had at eBay. Uh, it was a problem that we faced with managing our pen testing queue, uh, what we tried to do about it, and how we ended up optimizing some uh, aspects of our pen, uh, you know, pen test queue. But before that, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Kiran Shirali. I uh, currently lead the use case and correlation logic on the blue team at um, eBay. Uh, this was a very recent change. Just prior to that, I was working on the red team and uh, eBay. Uh, it's part of our security assessment group. It takes care of red teaming as well as pen testing. I've also worked on AppSec in eBay. Now, I, I like finding bugs. It's a passion of mine. I participate in bug bounties. Uh, I like poking and prodding systems. Uh, and when I'm not in front of a computer, I like to travel and uh, experience new cultures. So, so that we are all on the same page, I know this is a very basic start, but I want to make sure that uh, I set some um, uh, context here. What exactly is a pen test, right? It essentially is a simulated attack on the system. The attack is designed to test the security of the system. Now, in eBay, we have a, a bunch of candidates that come into our pen testing queue. And I'm going to uh, classify them in two large buckets. One is externally facing, another is internally facing. Now, externally facing is anything like eBay.com, what uh, you guys probably see on, on net when you come to uh, purchase something on it. Uh, internal applications, on the other hand, are not discoverable outside. There are maybe HR systems, monitoring systems, uh, systems built by our engineers because we give them a lot of flexibility to be able to automate some of the stuff that they're doing and things like that. Now, our pen test team is uh, primarily, uh, it's got two components. One is our internal pen testers itself and also um, external consultants that we engage. And we, we follow this hybrid model primarily for a lot of reasons, but the primary reason is our ability to flex up and flex down. Uh, there are times in, in, you know, in a month when you have 10 or 12 pen tests going on in parallel, um, sometimes just a few scoping calls. So it helps us to ma you know, manage our resources more effectively. Um, so the focus of this talk is going to be on these internal systems and not the external system. Uh, primarily, uh, oh, just let, let, me, let me just so that we are on the, all on the same page, just talk about what how an engagement is, right? So typically an, an engagement for these internal systems is like a two or three week engagement. You have one or two pen testers on this engagement. How it goes is that uh, we get a request from team saying, hey, um, can you pen test my application? Can you pen test my uh, product for me? And again, remember these are internal applications. And um, for a company of our size and our longevity, we have a lot of uh, systems that have been built over time that people have not really focused on uh, in a security perspective. So um, over the last couple of years, we have been trying to seep the culture of security into the company. So uh, anytime there is, say, a movement from a data center to another data center, you're doing a tech refresh of certain systems. We have a requirement saying that you need to go through a security review. And that's why a lot of these teams do come to us, some by choice, some not so much. Right? So when they do come in, we uh, have an initial scoping call. The scoping call asks them, what is the system about? Give us, give our pen testers who have no idea about your system a walk through the design and all. Then the actual tests are performed. You go through your use cases. You see the logic around it. Um, you perform your tests. Now, a good pen tester will focus a lot on the report too. It's, it's essentially documenting your work. You want to be as detailed as possible. You want to talk about the steps that you performed and uh, give some suggestions for remediations. And then finally, you have a walkthrough with that team. You tell them uh, what you found, how you found it, how they can fix it. Many times what happens is once you do this walkthrough with the team, they come back, um, say some of them don't agree, or you have a, a sort of a, you know, a discussion, they go and fix certain things, they come back saying, hey, can you retest those, those findings for me? So you do step two, three, and uh, four again. So, and, and, and in some cases, you have scenarios wherein they've not remediated stuff properly. 
you will have to do a remediation test on the remediation test. So it, it's sometimes an endless loop. Um, but again, so the bulk of the pen test that or pen test requests that we get is on these internal systems, right? Uh, because just as I've said before, there's just too many numerous systems. We are essentially a developer shop. So we give the flexibility for our engineers to build in any language, any platform that they want uh, internally. And um, so these systems are so different from each other that it's, it's uh, hard to set, you know, very unique standards for each of these systems. But at the same time, because the systems are relatively small and not humongous like, like eBay.com, you don't need a lot of context to be able to do this uh, quickly. So you can scope some of these systems in two to three weeks uh, in those buckets. And that's why we engage our external consultants, a part of our team, mostly on this section. But that becomes pricey very quickly. Right? It's a lot of cost. Um, and again, some of these systems, they're just too small for a secure SDLC process. Or else they might be third party systems that have not been built by us. We don't have access to the source code. We only be, are able to configure uh, certain things on these systems. So if you have ever seen a pen test report, um, these classifications of vulnerabilities uh, won't be uh, you know, unfamiliar to you. Uh, this is generally what we see across our reports. Um, but there's one pattern in this that I would like to focus on. Essentially, you know, misconfiguration issues, uh, encryption issues, rate limiting issues, security headers. And in a lot of our reports, we keep seeing these uh, statements peppered across, right? Uh, TLS version is outdated, insecure ciphers, right? Your um, cookie flags or a couple of security headers are being used, but not being used uh, properly. So 20 to 25% of our findings on the final reports are essentially those kind of um, issues. And a good friend of mine you know, termed this very nicely. He said these easy to find issues that essentially true positive pen test noise, right? Um, as a pen tester, I'm motivated and challenged to find the business logic flaws. Now, don't get me wrong. The issues that were given up there, they're important to find too, right? They're important to get them remediated too. But as a consumer of the report, as well as um, uh, a pen tester, I believe there's more bang for buck when you have your team focusing on that business logic flaws and not these easy to find flaws. So, and also because they're all external consultants, it, it's, it's, it's money that we are essentially burning away uh, in our perspective. So we, we, we thought um, a year back, how do, you, how do you optimize? What can we do to fix this problem? Right? So initially what we uh, said is, let's do checklists. Right? We don't want to reinvent a secure STLC process. It's just a, a checklist of maybe 10 or 15 things. Right? And uh, every time somebody came to, a pen, uh, came to us for a pen test, we said, here's the checklist. You need to go through this checklist and make sure that you're doing everything on the checklist. If you're not, we won't pen test you. So your timelines, if you've got timelines for a particular um, program, um, not our problem. Right? So we even to evangelize it, we wrote pre-canned configuration files for Nginx, for Apache, for Tomcat. We tried evangelizing all of this. Now the problem in the self-certify model is, yeah, people came back saying, yeah, we've done all of this, every single one of them. And we went and did the pen test and we saw that our results were not really changing, right? They kept coming in there. Uh, and and, and it's, a, it's a set of problems. Some of these folks don't really understand security so much, so they go in and they don't know what in that checklist they need to apply to their um, systems. Some of them are doing these changes, but not not effectively. And some are telling us they are doing our changes, but somehow it all magically just disappears when it comes to a pen test, right? Um, so we went back to the drawing board and 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 essentially wanted to build something or do something that will um, help us solve this problem, right? Now there was one idea: do we buy another fancy tool? Oh, no. No, no, no more tools, right? No more, no more buys. Let's not buy something. We need something also that was quick. 
anything that our uh, PD team need to spend more than one minute, 60 seconds on, was something just not acceptable to us. Because we, again, as I said, we didn't want to reinvent the, or reinvent the secure SDLC process, which we already have for a lot of our uh, uh, applications, especially our external facing applications. Also, we wanted something that's very easy, simplified, so people don't uh, crib about how difficult our new process is, right? And that's when we built Hunter. So what is Hunter? Hunter is a lightweight tool uh, to audit for easy to find security vulnerabilities. I know another tool, but uh, something that fit our requirements, right? It essentially grades your uh, um, HTTP endpoint between an A to C uh, grading. We will add some more grades up to F, but I know there's a few rules that it, it checks for. And uh, before I step into what it audits for, let me tell you what Hunter is not. It is not a replacement for our secure SDLC process, and if you decide to use it, it shouldn't be a replacement for yours. Right? Uh, it has to be just a prerequisite before you engage uh, or before a team engages you in your in your pen test, right? Um, also, it's not another tool for pen testers. It's, it has been very simplified. It's a quick grading tool just for your product teams. Now, what does Hunter help us audit? It checks for um, SSL versions, TLS versions. Um, it's got a, a weighted priority. Uh, for older versions, uh, sorry, weighted penalty for older versions. So the older the version that's enabled, the more uh, it docks points, lowers your grade, uh, look, checks for your configured ciphers, it checks for you know some of these strict transport security headers, um, checks for common mistakes that we are seeing when people configure their headers. And it's, again, it's all based on our guidelines or what we uh, recommend to our teams. Uh, again, in CSP, one thing that we always see, people put it in, and then they put unsafe eval in there. Uh, so things like that. Again, a few more of the headers and, and cookie flags, right? Um, so at a very high level, it's, it's Python-based code. We have a wrapper around, uh, and we basically use SSLIs by Albin from Data Theorem. Um, you know, it's, it's Django and Django REST framework based. It uses a couple of uh, uh, Python libraries. So in an architecture perspective, at a very high level, our users interact with a UI. It's a front-end UI that's very simple. Uh, I will show it to you in a, in a minute. Um, the front-end UI interacts with, a, with the back-end via REST. And while the server has a couple of components, the two most important ones is an, you know, a scoring module as well as an audit module, the names are self-explanatory. Our audit module does those audit checks that I've uh, talked about. The scoring module uh, scores based on the results. Now, one thing I would like to note is right now the scoring module is kind of built into that uh, sorry, the scoring uh, parameters are built into the module. We want to pull that out so that it's more configurable because something that's important for us might not be important for you, right? So that's uh, work in progress. Um, so yeah, let's, let me quickly show you a demo. So here's how Hunter looks like. Like I said, it's simple. Right, uh, the simple one text box that they have just given HTTP endpoint. There's one uh, button. So if anybody comes back to me and says this is complicated, I'm like, really? <laughs> right. Uh, so I do have uh, one or two links up here that essentially is a help and contact. Now the help files is there. There's a bunch of links in there that um, um, internally we use it to our. Uh, pre-canned configurations, we have some of our own support pages that helps people mm, fix certain things in an eBay way. Now, in, my, in the open source uh, code, we have put in some of that data onto our GitHub link, so that's, it's configurable. Um, now, I'm going to test it against a particular site. Um, I'm hosting it locally. It's just a simple web page. The reason is uh, security conferences and the Wi-Fi I'm just not comfortable inherently. All right, so um, this local application has all the protections that you ideally would want um, want, an, want an internal application maybe to have, in, especially if you're thinking of 
upping the security. So let's go back there. Fingers crossed. Oops. And yeah, so under what? Three, five seconds, we get results. And right now, of course, it's a local host, right? We have, we've done some tests with internal applications. We've done tests with external applications uh, under 30 seconds. That, that was our primary concern. Now, this uh, particular rating is the best possible scenario, right? You have uh, TLS 1.2 enabled. You have all the relevant headers uh, that's required. In our perspective, we, there's a few more things that we do with, with respect to eBay that's not up here. We've removed that off. But, and it's, again, very configurable if you want to add in a couple of more modules. Um, now, before this presentation uh, started, I did a few uh, tweakings on that test site and, say, and, and you know, changed or removed some of the protection. So, and I'd run uh, Hunter next to it. So, Oh, sorry, uh, I had run Hunter on it. So essentially, this is a scenario wherein you get the worst rating so far. Like, you know, SSL 3.0. It's just a big no for us. We just want to, we're going uh, after teams that have this internally enabled. Uh, we are also actively discouraging TLS 1.0 and 1.0 uh, and 1.1. Um, none of the security headers in, in place. So. The best case scenario and the worst case scenario, there's not a lot of systems that come in uh, with that. Um, that's, that's good. <laughs> Most of the times, the bulk of our uh, um, uh, applications that come in for pen tests come in a, in a scenario like this, wherein it's like a mid-level rating. They've got some protections in place, like they've disabled SSL uh, 3.0, they've got 1.0, 1.1 enabled, they've also got 1.2 enabled. Um, they have a few of those headers in place, but they're making mistakes in terms of when they put the headers in place. So, so this is like the bulk of uh, stuff that we uh, see. And we have a policy now internally. Uh, we say unless you get a, uh, an A grade on this tool, in the audit tool, we'll not pen test you. So it helped us reduce the, the you know, uh, the folks that said, yes, we fixed things, uh, but uh, they didn't really fix it. They didn't know how to fix it, maybe. Uh, it started reducing those uh, uh, pen test noise, as we, as we call it, right? And uh, helped us increase optimization within our team. So I'm going to stop uh, for a second here and ask, does anybody have any questions? Um, do you want to give the, okay, sure. Um, what is, what issues does this tool look for specifically? Like just the TLS, um, some headers mm -hmm. or also the general application security bugs? No, it's, it's not for the general application security bugs. It's very, as I said, very stripped down because we didn't want to re reinvent the wheel, honestly. And in some essence at a very low level we have, um, we have a full secure STLC process in place, and that's got a full uh, uh, comprehensive you know, set of processes. This was more intended just to have those basic audit levels, uh, audit checks, um, to prevent the pen test noise. Uh, and we didn't want to buy some new fancy tool. That's, that's our primary reason. Your scoring module works like so right now the scoring model is uh, the question was well, how does the scoring model work right so right now the scoring module is pretty simple we have a weighted average um, as on based on what we uh, think is important and SSL versions right now have the worst weighted mortgage, uh, weighted average like docs on a hundred percent perspective it docks about 20 25 percent of your uh, score um, the other ones are, are more they're lesser. It's in a few percentages, single digits. Again, um, one of our immediate releases will pull this model out and give it in like an admin page or maybe a, a config file that you can go and tweak uh, the way you want it. Thanks. 
I was just curious how much you're looking for from the CSP policy portion. Like, the, are you just looking for the presence, or do you guys have a specific policy you're trying to push forward for these teams? So we right now, um, that's, that's a good question, by the way. We don't uh, uh, do an extensive check. We're just looking for the presence, and we're making sure that um, uh, they're not adding in unsafe eval, and that's one of our primary concerns. Because many times we have seen that people, we are, we are recommending it internally to our teams uh, as a test bed, and, and we see that they just add in these unsafe eval just to get away from um, uh, you know, the protection or for ease of use. Outside of the TLS versions that you're capturing, are do you, do you have a, like a list of preferred encryption algorithms or ciphers that you're that you're flagging, or are you just kind of listing the encryption algorithms that you're currently supporting? So right now we have uh, an internal set that we recommend. So um, you're not flagging any ciphers as of yet, um, but we are recommending that we that our teams use the cipher list that's approved, and that's what comes up as in our help pages. Also, just adding to that, right now in our help pages, uh, in this, in the open source uh, uh, stuff that I post, I have links to those configuration files that we evangelize uh, internally. So we've already published it on uh, GitHub. We, uh, you know, you you can see some of these details in there. Okay. So if I had preferred ciphers, then I might be able to whitelist to blacklist. If, 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 if I were to configure it as mm -hmm. such. Yeah, you can flag it. Yes. So you you mentioned that you have a lot of legacy applications, mm -hmm. but you also have an SDLC process in the yes. company. Mm -hmm. So I can um, I can see how probably lots of applications got deployed into production. Mm -hmm prior to that SDLC being in place, or maybe there weren't the same kind of QA processes there before release into production. Is this integrated now into that process so that before a new system gets released mm -hmm. in production, they have to pass this as a minimum, and or you know even your internal pen test? And so then th is it gonna like kind of die out eventually once those processes are matured? That is actually the hope, that it will die out at some point. Um, so we do have an extensive say, a secure SDLC process. And we have this as one of the prerequisites in there. Now, the problem with, the, with that approach is that sometimes some of these internal applications, there's no access to the, the source code, for instance. right? It could be just a con off the shelf software that needs to be configured and all. In those cases, there's, there seems to be not a lot of value in the S secure SDLC process. A lot of the portions get skipped. And that's when we have them go at the minimum of this and a pen test uh, so that we are at least checking uh, to see if, if everything is well within our standards. Now, again, as I mentioned, a lot of those older legacy systems, um, it, we are being pragmatic. We won't be able to go after them all within this year, right? As uh, they get you know, uh, decommissioned, new ones come up, or they're being moved around, we are hoping to target all of them. Did I answer your question? Okay. Uh, how did it affect the uh, pen test results by external contractors? Did you start getting better results? Yes. Um, so we started reducing our fines of this sort by a considerable number. Unfortunately, I cannot share that number. Um, I uh, we had an internal review of this thing, and, and uh, uh, that, but it was a considerable amount, uh, especially among internal systems. It's higher double digits. Um, um, in the external systems, overall, our, and our overall, because we do. So see, uh, if you're doing about five to 10 pen tests a year, this is not a big concern. If you're doing about 50 to 100, it's a rising concern for you. If you're close to about 300, it's a big concern, right? So uh, it was a significant amount for us. You mentioned like a pen test queue that your internal teams were kind of working against. Can you describe like, by just implementing this, like what, what did that enable your pen test teams to do then? Did they focus on business logic? Did mm -hmm. that make them do like more pen tests? Like what, what was the effect of just implementing these prereqs that you described? So it was a combination of two things. Um, one is 
our scopes, uh, or at least the time that we took for doing pen tests, started actually dropping. Because you see, um, when you find something, you need to document it. That takes time. You need to present it to the team. That also takes time, right? Um, and then what happens is we need to hold on to these resources uh, because we'll want them to come back for a remediation pen test. And that, that also takes time. So in all of these scenarios, by reducing these fines, actually our, our, the number of pentas that we could do within a period of like a month or two started going up for us. The converse of it is also we started um, having more challenging work for our uh, consultants. Folks wanted to be uh, uh, engaged. They liked the variety. They saw that they didn't need to really um, you know, deal with the pentas noise. Um, so it, it was a two two uh, efforts uh, two effects that was positive for us. Any other questions? Okay, let me just go quickly back to the presentation. I have just a few more slides, and I guess I'm going to leave you guys early for lunch. Oh, that worked. So uh, you can look at pen, uh, look at the Hunter um, on my GitHub link. Um, I'm open to pull requests. If there is any uh, uh, features that you think is important that we can all use, message me. We could probably put it on our roadmap. It's again, it's a personal pet peeve for me, um, a pet, personal pet project for me. Uh, also, I'm right now pushing on a, I'm cleaning up a little stuff. It's functional. But you know, there's always scope for improvement. So see a, you'll see a couple of uh, uh, pushes out over this week. Um, so yeah, please use it if you think it's it's uh, applicable for you. Let me know. Give me feedback. Um, we have some future plans. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, we want to pull the uh, the scoring out out of the module. We want to put it on maybe an admin page. We still haven't decided. Um, at, that's that's currently work in progress. Um, we want to integrate it with, with LDAP or single sign-on, primarily because we want to know what are the requests that are coming in, and we want to scale these. Uh, sorry, we want to save these scan results. Um, it's like a history. Also, based on the saved results, we want to maybe periodically go check things again uh, at a later stage because sometimes things get rolled back. Uh, you know, and, and uh, maybe there's a follow-on pen test six months later, and we see, hey, didn't we really fix this the last time? So uh, we want to prevent such scenarios. We also are looking to uh, start identifying self-signed certs. Um, also, internally, we have a CA for our internal applications. We want to be able to, um, you know, save or push for adoption for for that CA. And uh, yeah, these are our future plans. Again, if anybody has any questions, I know I, I did answer a couple of them, but. Oh, guess I'm going to get uh, give you back almost 20 minutes of your time. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>